Yeah, thanks, and for thanks, well, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, we, we've had uh, a, a, a member of the campaign for real education on yesterday, Chris McGovern, and he was talking about how these teacher strikes, it's like mafia bosses, you know, intimidating people and really not putting children first. Children have gone through a hell of a lot in the last couple of years. They're the real victims of a uh, lockdown policy and uh, teach schools being closed. They've lost crucial years of their lives, crucial education. Is this the right time, no matter what the dispute ever pay, for teachers to be walking out and leaving them with empty classrooms? Well, these strikes are fundamentally about, Julia, is the issue of recruitment and retention in our education system, which is the fact that we're not able to recruit and hold on to enough high quality teachers. Now, teachers, the profession, trade unions have been warning about this issue for a very long time, but they've been ignored. So now they're having to escalate and amplify their warnings to really, really sound the red alarm here, because if we don't solve this issue of recruitment and retention in the teaching profession, Julia, we're not just talking about a few days of disruption from strike action. We're talking about years of disruption yeah. to our young people's education. Um, we, we know something like teachers in the classroom. One, in, one, is it, one in five secondary schools don't have um, anyone teaching uh, science subjects who's actually got a science qualification. Uh, you, you look you're just not going to learn to a decent enough standard if you haven't got teachers who, who know their stuff themselves. That's a big issue. So is it all about pay? Is that the number one issue? I think at this point, fundamentally, it is, uh, Julia, because at present, the government have sentenced teachers to a real terms pay cut in the middle of the cost of living crisis. So, so have most people. people. Most people have had a real terms pay cut. Our teachers are just the same as those normal people. They struggle to pay their rent, they're struggling to pay for their childcare, they're struggling to pay for their mortgages. And as much as they love helping our young people, if they're not able to pay for their rent, if they're not able to pay for their mortgages, if they're not able to pay their childcare, then they're just not going to be able to carry on doing this job. And if they're not able to do, carry on doing this job, then we know they're going to leave the profession. Now, according to one poll by the Sutton Trust, one in ten teachers are saying that they're likely to leave the classroom yeah, we, uh, just because they can't afford to do so. We see polls. No, 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 Baz, Baz. There are polls all the time. Time. Education is going to be even more of an issue than it is now. Baz, there are polls all the time. Virtually, you know, half the people in virtually every job say they're looking to leave their job, whether they actually do or not is an issue. We know that younger teachers are more likely to leave. We know that within the first five years after passing teacher training and getting into the classroom, an awful lot of young people leave. I think actually a lot of those people are not being properly prepared for the classroom and don't really realise, you know, I mean, it is a tough job. I've never pretend that this isn't a very, very, very tough job. I certainly uh, wouldn't want to do it. I'm, I'd, I'd be in prison after the first week, the way I deal with a lot of these brats, I'll tell you that. Um, but, but the question is, like, what do we need to do to make it, it better for them? Because a lot of people are saying, actually, it's, it's the bureaucracy. It's the form filling. It's the time you have to spend ticking boxes as opposed to, you know, actually teaching, imparting knowledge and feeling the satisfaction of your, your pupils' learning. It's about uh, pupil discipline and expectation that, that children will, you know, if, uh, look, if my school said that my daughter wasn't paying attention in class and wasn't, you know, she'd be in trouble at home as well as at school. And I think more parents should have that attitude, should they not? Is it just about pay or is it these other issues as well? You're right, Julia, that teachers will have their own individual reasons for why they end up leaving the profession. And some of those might involve workload, some of them might involve the culture in their school. But we do know from surveys that have been done by, for example, the National Foundation for Educational Research with teachers who leave the profession, and indeed with prospective teachers who end up not joining the profession, that one of the really big issues that figures up, up there for them is teacher pay. Because without proper pay, they're not able to be productive and happy workers. They're not able to be productive and happy workers. They can't be the world-class teachers that our young people need. What should and they be? We need if we want to have a world-class education. Yeah, we system. do need. I mean, again, I think that teachers should be in a situation where they are respect, you know, very senior and respected members of society, highly qualified. We have had a situation for many years. We've allowed people to go into teaching who have not been very well qualified, frankly, um, uh, and and that has been an issue. And again, I'm not quite sure why teachers would expect to be paid say as much as doctors when they don't have to have anything like the same sort of grades to get into teacher training college. Do we need to just uh, up our expectations of teachers at the same time as upping pay? Um, and one of the things Chris McGovern of the Campaign for Real Education points out is we've got huge budgets for, for staff in schools, but an awful lot of it, more than half in some cases, is going on people who aren't actually teaching. Get rid of the classroom assistants, have fewer, you know, have, have teachers who are actually qualified, pay the good teachers more and, and, and basically get people into the, and sustain the profession for longer because you're enabling them to do the job properly. Well, I've had this conversation with Chris previously, and I think we both have different interpretations of the data. My understanding, if you look at the granular breakdowns of the Department of Education data, is that more, more money is being spent in schools on non-teaching staff, but 
lot of that money is basically being spent on senior leadership teams, head teachers, deputy head teachers, mm. assist, assistant head teachers. Those teams have grown massively in the last 12 years, Julia. In terms of what I think teachers should be paid, I think we know from the evidence that if we want to recruit teachers, if we want to hold on to them in the classroom, then they need to be paid at a rate that is competitive with the wider market. Now, according to the Financial Times between September 2022 and December 2022, pay in the private sector rose by around 7%. In the public sector, it rose by about 2%. So we can see that even currently, but before we even look at the wider context, Julia, yep. that teacher pay is not... OK, that 7% was largely people, actually an awful lot of people were, were moving jobs. It was particularly focused in different industries. But also, of course, that doesn't allow for the pension differentials, which is a huge part, a huge, huge, huge part of, of teacher pay. We'll have to leave it there because time's against us. I do hope you'll come back on the show again soon.